we're creating. I've got the render here. This little gold bar, low poly game asset, made with a very low poly um, mesh that we're going to use in game, and also using a high poly mesh that we also made in part one of this uh, two part series in order to generate the extra details. So if you didn't see part one, part one we create the two meshes and we export them out, ready to bring into Substance Painter, which we are going to do now. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've already got uh, part one completed and we're good to go in the Substance Painter. So by now you should have used Substance Painter a few times if you've seen any of my other videos. So I'm going to go quite quickly through this. There's not a lot to this project. The real thing the real purpose of this uh, little asset tutorial is to uh, show you the high poly, low poly workflow that we would use uh, when creating game assets. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to create a new project using my low poly asset that we created in part one. I'm going to set the document resolution to 2048. Note that we're using the metallic roughness template here and just hit OK. And that brings in our little gold bar. You can see there it's got eight polygons, or sorry, six polygons, six sides and quite sharp corners. Now the first step we always do when creating a Substance Painter uh, texture set is we go to our texture set settings and we scroll down and we back mesh maps. Now up until now we have always just hit this little box that said use low poly mesh as high poly mesh because in the previous tutorials most of the time we didn't have a high poly mesh to work off. There's been one or two that we did, but the majority of the assets I've uh, created so far have all been uh, just working off one low poly mesh. But in this one, we do have extra high definition meshes. So what we want to do instead is this little box here where it says high definition meshes. I want you to click on the little paper icon beside it and then choose your high poly. And what this will do is basically superimpose the high poly mesh onto the low poly and when we're back in our mesh maps and when we're back in our normals and things like that, it will take those details from the high poly and add them to the normal map that we're using on top of the low poly. Now there's a little thing I want you to do here, max frontal distance and max rear distance. That's basically the distance that the polys of each surface will uh, be separate from each other in the two models. How far do you want them to back down? Now, if I, let me just try this. I'm just going to try this first of all to show you what happens. We're going to leave it at the default value of 0.01. Now the last time I did this one, I did a little test. I don't think it was enough. And let's have a little look. You can see there that we're getting these nice curved surfaces, but we are not seeing the detail on the top. So if you remember the one that we made previously, uh, actually, let me show up the, the photo again. The one we made previously had the uh, gold on the top and the little indent here. So we modeled that in high poly. That's not showing up. The reason why that's not showing up is because uh, we didn't we didn't set this max frontal distance and this max rear distance high enough. So all we're going to do is just click that up a little bit. 0.065, hopefully be enough. And we'll do the, the rear as well, 0.065. So depending on how complex your mesh is, you might want to be a bit more careful with this. Again, because it's a very simple mesh, um, very simple geometry we're working with, I'm just going to bump these up or sort of a little bit higher, not too high, just a little bit higher, and that should work. And we're just going to hit back again. And that's just going to overwrite these maps, and it's totally fine. It doesn't really, uh, there's nothing wrong with overwriting these, it's totally fine. Changing those details, you'll see now that that extra detail is now appearing on top. So look at that. We've got a little bit of crustiness there. The lettering wasn't quite perfect uh, in our 3ds Max file, but I'm not worried about that. Um, it's barely noticeable. It's okay. Um, but you can see there now we've got what looks like extra detail. The main thing that I want to point out is look how nice and soft and rounded those corners look. That's still a very sharp edge. If we go down here, you can see that's still a very sharp corner. But when you're looking at this from kind of reasonable game camera distance, you get those nice corners. Look at that. Look at this little highlight here. Again, that's a sharp corner, but it's taking the polygon detailing from the high poly model and using it to affect the normal map. So the normal map on each of these planes is kind of curved at the corners to make it look a lot more detailed than it is. And look at that lovely detailing on top there. 
we slide that around and we can see the highlights it makes it look probably 3d but again it's completely flat it's completely 2d so that is in a nutshell how we use high poly and low poly meshes uh, together in order to take the details from the high poly mesh back them into the textures and then have really good looking low poly meshes that are efficient and can be used in game so i didn't measure the poly count on that gold bar last time but it was probably up a good couple of thousand whereas the actual in game asset we're using uh six sides that'd be 12 triangles total so you can see the difference that makes now of course what we're going to do is we add a little bit more to it here um and paint in some details in the normal that have the same kind of effect but oftentimes we want to actually make those on a high poly mesh instead it can be a better way to get a uh, better detail so let's actually finish up this asset now that's the main that's the main learning piece that i wanted to cover there and hopefully that's demonstrated that for you but let's actually finish this up and have ourselves a nice little asset so let's go over to layers it's going to take two minutes not going to take very long at all uh there we have gold pure just a pre-made material that's grand i'm just going to drag it on and let's see how that looks that looks quite nice it's a wee bit fake looking maybe a wee bit too shiny um but you know what we can go to the gold layer let's have a look at our properties here i'll maybe turn the roughness up just the tiniest little bit change the color just the slightest little amount and metallic just down a couple of percentage points might make a little bit of difference just to make it that little bit less uh, cartoonishly gold you know what that, i'm happy enough with that what i want to do now is make it look less pristine and artificial though i want to add a little bit of extra detail and again if i open this uh image you'll see some of the things that i did so i want to add some uh sort of stipple to the top here to make it look as if it's not quite pristine as if it's just a little bit of roughness on the surface and I also want to add some kind of dust and fingerprints to it to make it look like the bar has been handled or knocked out a little bit. Uh, so it's just not like a, a polished finish. So it's maybe sitting in a warehouse or someone's grabbed it and left it. You can see the fingerprints here. So I'm going to show you how we can do that. What I'm going to do is I am going to just duplicate this gold pure. Duplicate layers. And I'll just call it, um, let me see, gold what's the word i'm looking for I, I just call it fingerprints that'll do grand gold fingerprints there we go and what i want to do is i want to put the roughness up i don't want this to be shiny at all bring the metallic down a bit and just change the quality of that ever so slightly and then we are going to add a black mask to this bring the shininess back and we're just going to take our paintbrush tool here and we're going to change the alpha let me just pull this up a wee bit so we can see a bit better what we've got uh let's change the alpha just to something kind of like smudges or there are fingerprints i'm not use the cracks one dirt stain's quite good we'll make this quite big and let me see if I just pop that on there. That's not too bad. You can see without you changing the color in, just by changing the uh, the roughness value and the metallic value, it just gives that little bit of a like a, a patina or a patina, how do you pronounce it, to the gold. Now obviously if you overwork it, you can make it look very, very dirty and grimy. So maybe let me see take our stroke opacity down here to about 47 percent and we'll just put that on there a bit lighter what we can also do is we can let me see go to your angle jitter so that every one of them will rotate that brush it'll look a little bit different each time i would only put too much on there just a little bit just so that we get to see that little bit of uh griminess and of course don't forget to do the bottom because it might be a game where the the gold bars can fall out of a vault or they can be hit by explosions or whatever so these might end up upside down or whatever and i'm just doing this very quickly you don't need to use the same stamp over and over again 
You can change up your stamps. You can make your own alphas. Um, get a bit creative with it. Uh, let's see. One thing that I did like was if we, if we get a nice fingerprint alpha. Now, again, I suggest you maybe generate a fresh alpha with just maybe one or two fingerprints. But let me see. If I hold control and click and drag my left mouse button, I can rotate it around like that. And I'll just put on a... Oh, whoops, I've got the random. Um, I'll switch off this angle jitter so I know exactly what angle it's going to place at. And there we go. Control, left click, drag to rotate that around. And just put that on there. And see, we've got a nice little fingerprint now. As if someone's grabbed that bar. And of course, you can always do the, the same on the other side or do the same on the bottom, whatever you want. The only thing is, be very careful with it. Remember, if we're going to have a lot of these gold bars, we don't want a very obvious texture. Repeat it over and over again. So while the fingerprints might look nice, um, if you're maybe going to have a gold bar that you see up close, you can add this level of detail to it. But if it's just you've got to be one of 50 gold bars, don't have them all with fingerprints or else you have the same 50 fingerprints on the gold bars. Could look very artificial. Uh, okay, last wee thing we're going to do then, we're going to add that little stippling texture to the top. And how we're going to do that, we're going to make a new... Uh, let's make this a fill layer. Well, it doesn't need to be a fill layer. It doesn't matter. It can be a fill layer. It can be not a fill layer. Uh, we're going to turn off color. We don't need to add color to it. Now, why does that look so thick like that? Um, we're going to turn off roughness as well. We don't need roughness on it. We don't need metallic. Uh, we just need height and normal. There we go. Just with those two, that's fine. And I'm going to pull the height down a little bit. Not very much, just a tiny little bit. Subtle always works best with height maps. And we can always change it later. Because it's a fill layer, we can change it later. That's always a benefit of using a fill layer. Uh, so what do I want now? I'm going to mask it out. Add a black mask again. And now that will revert us back to our paintbrush tool. We can paint out where we want this mask to be. Go to our alpha. There was one of these that works quite well. Let me see which one is it. Uh, drop splash, not that one. I wish I could remember off the top of my head which one it was. It's one of these spray brushes. Dirt spots, I think this is the one. Dirt spots, we'll try dirt spots and see. So make that brush a little bit bigger. And you can see there, when we paint that in, just adds that little bit of knobbly texture there. And again, what I'll do is I will turn on my angle jitter just so it randomizes it each time. Now, it might crawl over the edges a wee bit. That's okay. We can go back and paint that out just with a plain brush. Uh, let me show you that. If I just set my... I'll just grab this nice big solid brush and set my grayscale color. Instead of being white, set it to black because we're on a black mask. And again, we're just sort of painting that out. We paint that out. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere it's not meant to. So there we go. If you paint on an area you don't want to, it's okay. It's a mask. We can paint it out again. So now I need to find that brush again. Why did I do that? Dirt spots. There we go. And set our color back up to white. Remember, on a, on a black mask or on any mask, white becomes visible, black becomes invisible. So I'll maybe just make that a little bit bigger. Uh, we are just stamping that on there. Uh, get that corner a little bit as well. And I will just go back now. with a, let me see, do we have a square brush or anything like that? Square brush might work, let's try a square. There we go. Turn off that angle jitter, so we've got more control over it. And we will just go from white to black again. Just paint out a couple of those bits that we went over. I think my opacity as well is only 
50%. So when we're erasing it, we want to erase it completely. So we'll just uh, put that up to 100%. There we go. I'm not going to add anything more to this. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. That wasn't too long. That was short and sweet. Just finish erasing those. You'll notice as well, we've got a little bit of uh, streaking and stretching the texture there. When it goes around corners, your stamps tend to uh, sort of stretch a little bit. Is this side looking? A little bit there. That'll do grand. And then don't forget the top. Okay, and control left click to rotate that brush. That'll do lovely. I'm happy enough with that. Could go over a wee bit tighter and a wee bit more refined, but good enough for our purposes. You can spend a little bit more time on it. Um, if you're thinking those uh, those little stipples there on top aren't uh, strong enough, don't forget we can go back to your height map. And we'll just rename this layer. That's the stipples or little bubble, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we can pull this height down again, remember. So we can pull it way, way down. Now that's too much, obviously. But we just keep it nice and subtle you know, there. That might look a bit better. So yeah, just go back, uh, play with it, tidy up this top, erase any extra wee bits. But that's all we're going to do. That's a, a fairly nice asset we've got there. Just hold Shift and right click. We can rotate that light round to see how it looks. And we see we've got our nice bit of dust and grime on there. Our greasy fingerprints. I think that looks quite good. That would look fairly convincing, sitting in the corner of a bank vault. And that took, what, half an hour? Not bad for half an hour's work. Okay, uh, last thing we'll do then. File, export textures. We can set our textures whatever size you want. They'll go to the document size, 2048. If this is just a tiny little uh, game asset, you could probably get away with shrinking these down to 512 textures. That would probably be grand. We'll go to see our file type. We'll keep it as PNG. That's grand. And just click up here to actually say where we want to save it to. So go bar in my tutorial file. And I could create another little folder in here. New folder. Textures. And we'll select in there. I uh, will just hit export. We can go into our configuration as well. We don't really need to do much in here. I uh, will export these. And here we go. Rather, not that. If we go to that folder. Go bar tutorial, textures. And you can see that spat out our textures for us there. And those are ready just to go into uh, our game engine, Unity, whatever. Okay, that's grand. I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. Hope that was useful for you. If you have any questions or even any suggestions, leave them down below. And I'll see you for the next tutorial. Thank you very much.